Hey everyone, welcome to Mixed Media Frenzy. And it's also off the board with pineapple papers. And to be honest, when I saw this pin, which was selected for uh, Mixed Media Frenzy, I A, fell in love with it, and B, cringed with uh, terror at how I was going to um, reproduce or replicate the elements that I love in it. First of all, it's in three sections. It looks like six and three and three. Um, and and there, there are lines here, and you've got some mixed media that, you know, crosses the line here. You don't know if it does here. It looks like you've got florals that were stamped on and then cut out of some uh, mixed media, and you've got this, the plain mixed media kind of in some strips. I just absolutely love it. It's monochromatic, kind of greens uh, and black and white. And uh, so, of course, I'm going in a completely different direction. Um, I'm going to try to, to reproduce as many of the things I love as possible. And I'll tell you right now what those things are. <laughs> First of all, these flowers are to die for, um, and and they're it looks like they're cut in half and then run a, uh, against this line, and they're curled, so it kind of looks like they're hiding under, and that this sheet is raised up, but I don't think it is. Um, and, and to be honest, I have no idea whether this is digital or physical. It's by Florilege, uh, Daniela of Florilege, and I really don't know too much about them, but I, I, I love this page. The black and white photo with that those greens is just amazing. It's got the black and white um, butterfly that's, uh, you know, looks like stamped just on white and then cut out. It's what I like here. It's got this stamp of text and then there, it looks like there's a space. I don't know if that's part of the stamp that says La Vie est Belle, uh, Life is Beautiful, or if it's um, wh what I'm getting ready to do. <laughs> and, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the, a, a, a scripty text, and I'm gonna, I've got some washi tape on it, and when I stamp it, it's gonna leave a spot, and then I'm gonna stamp onto that spot with my sentiment. So we'll see how well that works. Right now, and my big thing, my big question was what order to do things in. So first thing I'm gonna do is kinda tell you a little bit about what I'm working with. Um, my immediate uh, response to seeing this was to go start hunting for uh, mixed media pieces because I knew I couldn't create a mixed media piece since I do everything live action, if you will. I knew I couldn't create a mixed media piece, wait for it to dry enough to stamp on it and then fussy cut all of this on camera. So what I did was I went through my uh, photo library looking for mixed media pieces that I had scanned or photographed and I came across this one that is really not a mixed media piece at all. It is uh, a cleanup paper towel from overspray of different Dilutions inks. And you can see there's some spots down here. So this is not a very good representation of it. I printed this. This was the uh, eight and a half by 11 photo paper that I printed on. I printed this one big copy of it and then a smaller copy and my photo that I'm going to use. And then I cut off this part. You'll see I'm gonna work, still working with this part, but I cut off this part and I put it in my small misty, and then I, around, I stamped these flowers from the, where is, okay, it's right here, this Vicki Booten stamp set that came from um, Wildflowers and Honey. I used this large flower, and I did a, 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 as much as I could of, of this leaf, and then I did this bee, because I'm doing a page about Barrett, and we call him bee, so 
I, I did that. So I went back and I fussy cut these, and this is what I've got. I fussy, I stamped some, as you can see here on the, uh, this is, I'll try to show you. This is what I, uh, I fussy cut that one from there. And I, I wanted some with the, um, the white, part of the paper towel so you could kind of see the little bumps and uh, and and I'm really really happy with these this one didn't completely stamp properly there that came from there but so I just cut that out and I I kind of like it and it might be nice for a, a leaf to be under or something so so I've got these flowers and these leaves that I have fussy cut and just uh, I noticed that on the um, original all of the um, there's the what they look like on white paper just they're striking on on here it, it there wasn't a white border around and so I cut I'm, I am the world's worst fussy cutter I cut around as close to the design as possible and I used my where I left a little bit of a border on the outside I went and and blacked it up with this um, uh, Copic marker so that's how I got evenly or you know like black lines on the outside so next thing I'm gonna do is in the in here is this butterfly I do not have that kind of graphic butterfly um, stamp, but I do have this one that has these circles all around in it, so I thought that might be interesting. And this is the small piece. I showed you how I printed the larger piece and the smaller piece. This is the small piece that is in my, um, in my Misty. So I'm gonna place the the butterfly like so, and it's gonna get some purple and some green, and then some of the the dotty, the, the, just this part of the paper right here where the, the uh, ink is kind of flowed into or spotted on top of something there. So I thought the middle of the butterfly will have some color and the outside will just have the stamping. So that's my theory. Let's see how this works out. So I think I need to replace these and place this again because my paper moved and I really don't want to take any chances with that. Uh, yeah, move it up there a bit. Okay, and bring that down. Kind of hold that on. It kind of moved again, but it went back into place. Um, I've had to put an extra layer of foam because my stamps were not making contact, and I probably ought to put that um, down or, or you get the stronger magnets. I have some larger, stronger magnets. Let's see. That looks good enough to use. Okay, so you're gonna have to watch me fussy cut that from while, uh, while filming. And I'll do that to kind of tell you where I'm headed next with this. Let me put that away and put the stamp in the tray. And now I'll pull this up and fussy cut it. I'm going to cut the little, um, some little horizontal or a little vertical strips there or a little, you know, fairly narrow strips. So I, I didn't want to use all of this paper and I think I've saved, salvaged enough there I'll do this kind of uh, not uh, 
not right up into it or you know destroying the lines on the outside and then I'll go back over it with the Copic marker like I mentioned. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use washi tape. I have marked off at the top and the bottom of my paper. I've marked off um, six inch and then three inch and three inch line, you know, six inch and a three inch line. And I'm going to use those to doing the antennae may be a little bit more than I needed to do. Um, because I, but I'm just going to go ahead and, and color those in black. Um, Anyway, I'm gonna use washi tape, a narrow washi tape on the left side where there's this narrow line, and, um, and then a little bit thicker piece right here, and they're both gonna be black. Um, and then when I do my stamping and my lining up, I'm actually not gonna put the washi tape uh, on until I've done, well, I don't know. Should I do it before I do my lining up? I may, uh, I may do it first. I was thinking, I'm gonna use a mask. I'm gonna use this um, acetate overlay that was the, I'm using the Vicki Booten uh, Foundation's mixed media paper and that's the cover to the tablet. And I'm gonna hold it or tape it into place when I do my stamping and other mixed media. I've got, I've matched the color purple that's in here with this Seedless Preserves Distress Oxide and I'm gonna apply it with my fingers and do a little bit of water on it to get some of that water reactivity of the oxide ink. Let me do, get rid of that and do this. I'm not doing too well here. Um, if you were to go back and ask my third grade teacher, she would use the word that she used when I was in her class and we were cutting things out with scissors. In third grade, mind you, she used the word hopeless. Kathy, you're hopeless. So if she could see that my days, these days, my days are filled with lots of fussy cutting, um, she'd laugh. So Ms. Evans, take that. Uh, let me go here. Anyone from Crowley who's watching this, and there are many of my classmates from that, that time period. Um, okay, that is not narrow enough, I think, to go up there, but let me... Let me cut it in half, or at least in two. Okay, one's narrower than the other, and that's what I wanted. So I'll put this one kind of right there and this one there. Okay, let me go back to, I'm putting everything on the white paper. Let me do this. I'm going to take the end, my... Um, my Copic, this particular Copic needs a refill. I can get enough on here. It's actually, with needing a refill, it isn't as dangerous to use it as it otherwise is if it's juicy because this can actually, unless I'm pressing really hard, and repetitively rubbing back and forth, I don't get the, you know, the ink, enough ink out. 
but if it were juicy, it would be all over the rest of the butterfly. And that's, that's an effect that, you know, I might be going for at some point. Now, right here, I'm going to do this. Just kinda do that. And I am gonna use the point because I cut into the design there. I do want to make that look like it. I didn't cut into the stamp. Okay, so I love the butterfly because it's kind of picked up. Uh, I'll make sure that I put it on top of a flower that it contrasts with. Okay, now let's let the fun begin. Oh, the other thing is I need to cut those flowers in half. So what I'm gonna do, let me do that, is I'm gonna cut them unevenly so that some are narrower and some halves are bigger than the other halves. If that makes any sense. Okay, there. And here the colors are pretty well evenly distributed. I'm gonna do that. And yeah. And here I'll go kind of right in there. And here I want to make sure that I get some of the bright color as well as some of the white. And I'm turning them different ways because I want it, I want the flowers to look a bit different. This one I may keep like this because I like that part hanging out. So we'll see how they get arranged. There is a spot right here where there's, there's some of the, uh, some leaves kind of overlapping and touching the photo. I may actually break that line and put this on this side of the line, but we'll see how that works with my photo. My photo, by the way, is this one. And in the original photo, it was the other way around. I had to actually rotate it because I wanted it oriented the way that the, uh, the um, example one is. Let me get this over here. Um, but it was, he was leaning, and it was a picture of all four of the, the grandkids at the time, and he was leaning over, they were celebrating uh, somebody's birthday, and I just thought that upward look, I've got a couple photos of him the, where he's looking up like that, and I, I thought this one was the cutest. I didn't, I've scrapped it before in color, the, the one with the, all four of them, so I wanted to do something different. I ran it through a filter in the Prisma app on my phone, and I believe the, this app is called Curly Hair, and the curly hair actually made it a little bit gray, too, too grayish. So I then ran it through my filter in the photos program on my phone and I used the noir filter there, which made the blacks blacker and there's a lot more contrast and you can see the hair. You can also see it kind of looks like he has a little, little hair growth on his chin, but it's, or on his neck and on his shirt, but it's, it's, at a distance, it's kind of, um, uh, it's still cute. Okay, so having said all that, let's get to work. I've got these things. Let's go here. Now, I've made marks here and here. This is the bottom because I've got that one. Let me get the washi tape in my bowl here. Um, okay, I've got this really skinny washi tape. I'm going to do that one first. I'm going to turn it this way. It's going to go from there to there, and hopefully it'll stay. Um, now, I use this on cards a lot. Uh, I have not used it on a lot of layouts. Let me put it down on top of the little dot 
and then I'll put this down on top of the dot and hope it naturally went on straight. So we'll see how that works. I like it so far. Okay, here is the wider, slightly wider version. And it goes on top of the line here. This washi tape is great for going, uh, for bordering um, stamped images like um, landscape scenes or something like that on a, on a card. And there's a little bit, um, okay, that came right off. Okay, happy with it so far. So now, let's start building from the easy part. Right over here is a, a bit of mixed media. Uh, um, first of all, let me get my mask. My mask right here is meant to protect everything over on the other side of that line. And I'm gonna use this washi tape to kind of tape it down onto my glass mat. Okay, there we go. I wanna be sure that it's protecting the whole thing. And, and of course the line that I created with the washi tape isn't exactly the same. Okay, I'm going to, just kind of using this as a guide, I'm gonna rub some purple there and some purple up there, and then I'm just gonna start building that cluster and doing some uh, splattering. So, let me take this, And I'm gonna apply it with my finger because I really wanna kinda of control where it goes. And I'm going to Okay. And now I'm actually gonna blot that with a baby wipe that has some black ink that I cleaned off of a stamp. Okay, so that's good there. I'm gonna do another bit up in here. And I'm gonna get my finger wet. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do in the way of that. And now I'm gonna work from the line over to the left, and then I'll do the, uh, the part on the left. Okay, so I'm going to take my die cut rectangle here, and I'm gonna cut one side of the stitching off so that it looks like it's hidden, partially hidden, under that line, or whatever's on the other side of that line. So I'm going to glue that down, just right up against that line. Okay, so that it looks like it's hidden under there. And I have found a, let's see, I have in here a label that I've cut into two pieces and I don't didn't know whether I wanted to use the short piece or the long. I'm gonna go ahead and use the short piece, I think. So that's gonna go down here and it slides under 
that guy. And then I've got this. I found a um, a little piece right here. Where is it? It is Seize the Day. And it's from Diane Reevely. It's um, kind of, she has uh, both snarky and sentimental kinds of, of uh, sayings. I'm actually just going to put it on straight without any foam backing. I like that. I have this little, there's a little pointing, hand pointing symbol, and there's a leaf that would be kind of nice right here, but I think I'm going to just do the splatters, and for the splatters, I may, in addition to this, well, okay, I've got the mask a little bit over the paper line. Let me get the get that up a little bit. I'm gonna move it over farther so that the splatters for sure don't get over here. And just for the heck of it, just so that I don't create a mess, I'll do this. And let me get my Dilusions Black. And I noticed that there, there appeared to be mixed media kind of showing through the label. And I thought, well, gosh, I wonder how they did that. And I realized it could just very well have been applied over the label as I've just done. So there's also some text around in here, and I'm going to ink up my text stamp just right in this corner and kind of just touch it on there. And I'll do the same thing down here. Okay, I'm good with that. Um, so, what do I want there? Is that where I maybe want the bumblebee? I did, or do I want it over by the photo? I think I want it by the photo. So, that leaves me with my double hearts. Now, I have these stickers that came from a Fancy Pants collection by Amber LeBow, who is one of my favorite um, digital uh, designers. And she's uh, she did a paper line for... Um, and what I did was you can see how these hearts are set in a kind of a background that stays with the sticker sheet. And I'm having trouble getting this one up so that I can show you that. Anyway, there was a black and white one. And I just cut around it and I'm going to try to take the backing off so that I can get so that it will adhere. So I'll still have some adhesive on there. These are notoriously difficult to get up, but once you do, see it leaves that outline. So I'm gonna kind of put this down, just maybe right there on that acetate, and I'm gonna see what happens when I peel this adhesive, this uh, backing off. I'll see if the adhesive, if it's adhesive underneath. I think it will be. <sighs> Wish it were not taking so long. Okay, that peeled back. Hmm. 
<laughs> I'm trying to peel just the clear part and not the there. That lets me do that. Okay. So I'm going to put this right here and it adheres nicely there. And then I'm going to overlap this black one. Okay, so that's that piece finished. Now we go to the part with the flowers. And there's some splattering that goes on there. And so I'm going to, I'm gonna move this over here. And tape that down. Then I'm going to do some splattering just right there. Maybe a little up at the top and bottom ends. And then now I'm going to put the wider of these um, strips of the original mixed media bit kind of right up on this side of the line. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm going to start layering in flower segments. That's good, and then I want to follow that up maybe with a um, with one that has some purple and white. Let me kind of make those just barely adjacent. Let me get a different one. Maybe this one with the green and blue, kind of like that. And then I'll tuck in some of the others, but I want to get those down. Let that go like that. And then maybe I want to do, I'll do something like that. And then like this. And this kind of narrow one, kind of right in here. Well, let me get the ones that are going to go down the line adhered. And I can do this. Okay, and now I'm going to kind of curl those petals up rather uh, dramatically, if you will. Um, so that when I go to tuck the others in, I can take advantage of the fact that they're curled up. Okay, let's do this. Okay. And I just love how those overspray uh, splatters look on that um, and I may just let's see let me get my photo and see where it's gonna go it's going to be looking up 
kind of from here, I can slide it in under the flower there. Okay, so I like this, that placement, and I'll figure that out. I'll do that later. I'll just make sure I don't use that. So here, I'm going to just layer this one in under here and kind of curl this out, and then I'll put the leaves in later. Uh, let's see. This one may... Let's see. How about here? This one could go kind of like that, maybe. We'll, we'll see. And this, I tell you what, let's do. I'm going to put this up here. I'm going to curl that way up and curl this. And then that kind of tells me that this one may need to go right there. So that gives it a... And then I'll let the leaves kind of uh, help Okay, kind of help fill in. Uh, let's see. So I want to put the adhesive just on the first part. I'm going to fold the leaves like this, and maybe I'll stick one in like right there, and I'll burnish it to help it adhere. This one has the purple that I love so much. So I'm going to kind of put it over here to kind of bring that purple out. So I'm going to fold it and kind of curl it and fold it and curl it and stick it down and burnish it. There we go. And I may add in another leaf that maybe isn't as, isn't curled as much that kind of slides in under that one. Okay, love those leaves. And look at that, the colors on that came out so pretty. Okay, so where do I want this one? Maybe like right here or right here next to that one. Actually, um, well, yeah, you know, I like it because it's over the white flowers. So, um, oh, okay, pull that up. Don't want to do that. Do that, and I'll curl it and bend it. Okay, this one, in fact, I think I'll have two here, a long one and a short one. Let me make sure that's gonna work. Well, I'll put that in anyway. And then do I, does that look like it belongs or do I want it over here? Yeah, that's, that's better. That looks better to me. Okay, and I'll bring it down a little bit in length. Okay, so there's my, my flower panel. And I think I've done everything I need to do that way. So now, oh wait, I didn't put the butterfly in. 
So the butterfly, I'm gonna put on some foam. And if you could see how nasty my desk looks right now. And I'm gonna put the butterfly kind of right up in here. Not on the flowers. And the reason I'm doing that is that I don't, A, I don't want to cover the flowers, but B, I have this smudge right here that I intended for this printing to go over. I wonder if I could still, if there's enough ink on that stamp that I could still do that. Oh, yes, look at there. Okay, it's probably upside down, but who cares? So now the question is, do I maybe want it to go on the flowers or by the flowers, or I could just kind of overlap it like this. So let me do that, and I'm good. Oh my goodness, I got something here. That means I have to do some mixed media there. Okay, now, I'm going to get my This is the photo area, so I'm going to be extra careful. Um, I'm going to put this down. This way. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some liquid adhesive on this narrow strip because my tape runner would make it too wide. Okay, and I wanna put it kind of right where the other one is. Got that there. And I wanna set my photo on there now, but I want to be sure when I take all this off that I can put this flower on without covering anything in the photo so that it would actually maybe look like that. So I think that's about the right placement for the photo. So I'm going to do that. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to... I'm going to do that later because I have some, I have my very important um, open window mixed media to do, or open window stamping. And I've never done this before, so bear with me. What I'm doing here is, oops, I've moved my paper away from my mask. I'm inking up, and I can't show you other than, like on top of this mask, I'm inking up this stamp, and it's gone over that washi tape. And I'm going to have to kind of clean off the washi tape. And to be honest, if this doesn't work, I can always stamp the sentiment on a piece of white paper and put it down. I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to do this. And then I'll do some more down here just to kind of cover that spot. Okay, I'm done with that stamp. And it did leave a spot right there where I can stamp my title. And I've got my title here. It's from that same Vicki Booten stamp set as the flowers and the bee. And because it has the bee, 
the sentiment is perfect, and we call Barrett B. I probably mentioned that already. So I'm going to do that right there and hope it comes out. Okay, it does. I've got a spot over here, but I think the photo is going to cover that. And I will figure out something to do here to kind of get rid of that line. I'm okay with the line there. So I think that's, well, there's a little bit of splattering I want to do, kind of around up in here, down here. The splattering may be enough, and out here where the photo is going to be. Okay. Now. I'm going to take this off and put it aside because I have some cleanup to do because I'm going to use that sometime. I have this guy, but as I said, I want the petals to kind of surround it like that, so I'm going to put a little bit of glue a tape runner, rather, there. And I'm going to put some more here, and we'll see how that works out when I do this. Okay, the photo doesn't cover that, but the bee will, right? Okay, so yay, bumblebees. Um, just when you need them, they show up to the party. Uh, okay, here. And this brings a little bit of color over to this side, which the original didn't have, and that was one of the things I liked about it, was that it didn't have that color. So, okay, I'm happy with that. I do have another little um, piece of label. I've got this label and I'm going to slice it so that uh, let me it's I have to do it with my trimmer because there's no way I unlike Chamel, I cannot cut straight lines with scissors. So, got this. I'm going to put it right here. And again, my tape runner might be wider than this, so I'm going to use uh, So it's two different kinds of labels, and I need to put a little splattering on it. Okay, that worked. Now, I have this little sentiment that says ready for takeoff, and I'm gonna use it in place of that sentiment love. Now this is a clear sticker, so I'm I'm planning to use it like a as a clear sticker and I'm wanting it to look like a um, like a stamp. I'm overlaying the text here with it. Ooh, I like that. It went over a splatter, and I've just kind of moved the splatter around, and that's, that's okay. So I've got that. I have another one of those Diane Reevely stickers that was longer that I, I thought I might use along here. 
Um, let's see. The change on my mood swing just snapped. I don't think that's appropriate for Barrett, but um, Live Life in Color, I like. Um, don't forget to breathe. Rinse and repeat. Life is better with a cat. Showered in peace. Which part of no didn't you understand? Um, let's see. Gosh, where? One of my favorites is Laugh Till You Leak. But again, not so good for a Barrett um, layout. Oh, what do I want? Live life in color. And I can bring that over here. And this one I'm going to try to put on a very, very thin bit of foam. Okay, that seems to have worked. Just a clue, the adhesive on most stickers doesn't like to stick to foam. So, I go off, off camera, I go back just like I go back with chipboard and re-glue. I actually take the, I peel the sticker off. By that time it's stuck. The, the liquid adhesive at the bottom of the foam has stuck to the page and I'm able to um, peel up this sticker and then put a line of, of it, um, liquid adhesive there. So I'm gonna call this finished. Um, I would like to add a few Bramble Fox stars and I'm gonna go with white ones because I can put one over there on the on that purple and it'll kind of show up there and I can do one down here I'm going to off camera also use my black pen and fix the stamping on there which wouldn't have to be done. I'm going to do this one at the opposite corner and let it um, kind of be right in there where there was that line. It breaks that up. And I'm going to put this one over on this strip. Kind of, that would be too much in a straight line. So let me do something right over in here and it'll help draw the eye to the ready for takeoff. Okay, I think I'm done. Uh, thank you for watching. This was a scary one, um, but I think I captured everything I love about Daniela's. Oh wait, I do have, because I'm trying to emphasize that color purple. I do have a few purple enamel dots that I'd like to kind of use over in here. Maybe a little um, a little grouping of them there and I'm going to try another grouping over here and I'm going to use the Christina Sorge uh, small, medium, large kind of groupings there. Okay, done. Done and done. So thank you for watching. Sorry this was probably a long one, but I had a lot of fun and hopefully you, um, you did too. See you next time. Tomorrow for Off the Board again, every day in July, and next week, next Friday for Mixed Media Frenzy. Bye.